Hello and welcome to The Huddle. Liam Santa Maria with you and uh, we're continuing our chat with the NBL 22 head coaches. Today, we're going up to far north Queensland. My man, Adam Ford, in the hot seat for the Taipans this year and uh, my guest with me today. How's it going, Forty? Good, Liam. Thanks for, for having us. It's, uh, it's beautiful up here in Cairns, so uh, no complaints from mine, that's for sure. Palm trees, beautiful sunshine. How, how are you enjoying it up there? Yeah, look, we've been pretty lucky, obviously. With, um, aside from a three-day lockdown that happened in early August, um, it's been business as usual for us. So it's actually been, uh, it's put us in a good position where we've actually been able to do quite a bit of on-court stuff. We've got a lot of guys that are in state. Um, you know, we've got some guys that are at different stages of return to play. Um, so trying to manage it all has been uh, relatively easy for us because uh, we have been uh, very fortunate here in Cairns with the lack of COVID. Where are you now? Are you in the coach's office? I am. I'm in the coach's office. It's nice. I got myself comfortable here and uh, it's, uh, it's a bit of a bomb site at the moment, but um, there is method to the madness. I'm, I, I promise you that. What do we got on the, on the whiteboard there? Are they, they plays? Are they recruiting options? Um, a little bit of everything at the moment, just a little bit of reminders, more catchwords, the terminology things that we want to try and put in place this year. Um, uh, you know, some uh, common themes, um, and then more so I just come up with an idea, you know, on the way to work and I don't want to lose it. So I just sketch it up on the whiteboard and hopefully get around to it when I need to. Nice. And, um, Mark Beecroft, Troy Stein, have they, have they sorted you out a nice spot? Are you near the beach somewhere? Yeah, well, I mean, and first, uh, they, they've been great. So um, we're actually heading to the B-Cross house this weekend for the grand finals. Very nice. I got to actually stay there when I first moved up to Cairns during the whole um, house hunting uh, you know, uh, start. Um, but, yeah, no, I'm in a nice suburban area, Brinsmead. I've got the family with us. It's uh, close to work. It's close to Cairns. Uh, everything's close to Cairns, so that helps. But, uh, no, it's great. Rolling hills and lush green garden and... Um, yeah, it's been a nice change. Beautiful. And so Kylie and Carter are, are in town? Yeah, they're with us and um, enjoying the, the beautiful Cairns weather. Awesome. Um, you mentioned being on the floor. You've got a lot of guys in place. Well, what's been happening on the floor so far? Yeah, we've actually come into the conclusion of a, a six-week early, early preseason. We call this a little bit of the reclamation stage, which is, um, you know, obviously with, uh, five guys at the moment in different stages return to play. Uh, you know, Juki and Mirko who hurt themselves in, in NBL 1. Um, Jordan, obviously, with his off-season surgery, uh, quartz back from injury after his season injury uh, last year, and, uh, and Nate just with a, a hip um, injury. So... You know, managing those guys at different stages. We've been on court um, just doing what they're capable of doing. Um, and then in addition to that, Taj and Bull, about a quarantine. Um, so, you know, we don't want to go too hard with them too soon. Um, you know, Scott and JK were playing in the off-season and, and Keanu out from WA. So we've got nine, uh, ten guys in, in town. Um, and so it's just been a lot of, like, skill work, ball handling, uh, passing, um, you know, uh, some reactionary type drills. Um, you know, a lot of things you probably don't get to do uh, at, at any stage, I guess, in an NBL season. It's almost like I pulled out the playbook from when I used to work at Basketball WA and doing skill development with, um, you know, the young athletes over there and, you know, sort of bringing it back to basics. So we've been pretty fortunate that, um, you know, we've, we've been doing that, for, again, since mid of August. Um, so actually we're giving the guys next week off for that mental refresher. Or uh, we sort of started up again and have a few more guys returning. But um, yeah, it's been great just uh, establishing some team rules, um, you know, getting a bit of a schedule and routine in place and um, sort of starting with that foundation and building from there. Uh, who's, who's looking good? Um, everybody at the moment has been really good. Um, you know, obviously it's still a bit of a honeymoon period for us and, you know, we haven't played a game yet, so we're undefeated, which is great. And uh you know, trying to maintain that, um, um, you know, that level of enthusiasm uh, without obviously going too, too hard too soon, but they're not wanting to burn out. Um, but everybody's really good. You know, Majuk, who's basically, you know, knocking off all our scoring and shooting records at the moment, 
and doing so uh, with with an injury. So you know he's been great. He's got great touch. Nate's looking fantastic. Nate's um, you know he's he set himself a goal in terms of how he wanted to look and what shape he wanted to be in. Um, and he's hit all those KPIs. He's in fantastic condition and. You know, he's really impressed me also with, um, you know, the leadership he's taken on uh, with this group. Um, you know, I can run down the whole list. You know, Tajir has been everything and more, you know, since he got off the plane. He's going to make us better more handlers and finishes around the rim just because he'll take it from you if you give him a chance. So, um, yeah, everybody's been really good and impressive and it's just a matter of uh, trying to maintain it and, and, and continuing in a direction that's going to be beneficial for all of us. The big fella, Zimmerman, is the latest recruit for you guys. Obviously, Cam Oliver was in place. There was a strong feeling in and out of the club that maybe he wasn't going to be coming back given his NBA opportunities. And you mentioned that um, you didn't want to be caught by surprise. So you guys were had been putting in place some lists and some um, some potential uh, replacements for Cam. How, how did you land on Zimmerman? What kind of... Uh, attracted you to him? Yeah, you know, sitting with Mark and, um, you know, we sort of sat and going, all right, you know, what are the things that we need to address? Highlight? And that's basically, again, with all our guys that we brought in the free agency, um, you know, one thing that we both agreed on was we really wanted someone to be the anchor of our defense. Um, and so, you know, we had a list of 44 names. Um, mm. Out of those 44, uh, seven are shortlisted to the point where we did detail reporting to the point of even character references, calling coaches, talking with their agents. Um, you know, down to those seven, we came to four. And then even on the day with um, Zimmerman, it was two guys and we both had made an offer and the agents were waiting to get back to us about who we were going to decide on. And, and you know, the thing for, for me with Stephen was um, statistically you look at what he'd done in the Czech Republic, you know, he's the second import we signed that's just won a championship. Taji did it with the G League and Zimmerman's done it there. Um, you know, they he, he was second in the league in defensive rating, um, super efficient for his role coming off the bench in a super stat team. Um, and so his productivity was through the roof. He was uh, the number one in rebounding percentage. He was second in shot blocking percentage. Um, and then we had one of the best character references in a former teammate with him in Scott Machado. And, you know, speaking of Scott, he first thing he highlighted was he has incredible, you know, short game and mid range and floaters and he's super effective offensively. And, you know, he's smart with, you know, uh, what he wants to do and how he goes about scoring. And he's just turned 25. So, you know, this started to tick all the boxes as well as we wanted a guy that, you know, was still has NBA as, as a goal in mind, you know, and, and Stephen very much still wants to get to the NBA. Um, the tipping point for me, I guess, was talking to him on the phone and even as you got from the interview that's been around, he's got a bit of edge about him. You know, there's a bit of, there's, there's, um, he fits well with this group. Let's put it that way. There's, there's a bit of edge amongst his team where, um, you know, we don't want to shy away from being aggressive. It's almost, it's become a bit of a, a no-no to, to be overly aggressive and use violent words. And yet, you know, that sort of plays into the persona that we're trying to build is we want to have a level of intimidation, but not be intimidated. And Stephen is that exactly. He's very baby faced. And then he comes across, across as being absolutely ruthless. So you know, that was a massive win for me. And, uh, you know, we're, we're excited to get him out here as soon as possible. Um, there's a bit of edge about you too. We, uh, we, those who know you well, um, appreciate I'm, I'm still, that. I'm still on probation from the NBL. I gotta be, yeah, just don't try and stitch me up here. I've still got a one game and three thousand dollar deferred, so don't try and stitch me up here. Okay, continue. okay, so we won't talk, we won't talk about uh, you know, RAC Arena and the like, but let's let's ask, I want to ask you about this. So, some people, um, know about your life before basketball coaching your work in the prison yards, but I think some people maybe don't. Can you tell us about that work that you used to do, how you got into it and, and how it's helped to kind of shape the coach and man you are today? Yeah, I guess. Um, so the 
the turning point or the crossroads where I got to going down that road was I was working for Basketball WA, but I was also working for the Perth Wildcats in a voluntary capacity. And it just came down to it where I had to make a decision where Basketball WA wanted me to continue on and go up through the ranks in that position, which then required that I no longer spend time with the Wildcats. And I, I thought, no, I, I, I knew I wanted to coach in the NBL. That's what I wanted to do. And, you know, it, it was a safe job being involved in as a basketball administrator for Basketball WA, but that's what I wanted to do. So um, and I, I had to pay the bills, right? So I, I wasn't, I wasn't living at home at the time. I was 30 and, you know, I had bills to pay. And so um, I got involved in shift work in the prisons um, doing case management, which was involved in a lot in regards to, um, you know, just making sure the guys are on their parole plan, um, you know, that they're attending their therapy sessions or um, their work placement, whatever it may be, it was towards their, um, you know, time served. And, and, I guess the one thing you you learn is you get a quick you get a thick skin. Like you can't get offended by everything they say to you. And if you do, you you you, you know uh, it's you know what are you going to do? Like someone calls you something offensive, and you got to move on from it. You know you you can't react. And you, and then also what um, it helped build, I guess, was my communication skills in a sense of uh, the importance of verbal and non-verbal language and how it can be interpreted right and you know sometimes you can use intimidation uh to your advantage and sometimes you want to clearly show that you're not a threat and so um you know there's there's a lot that correlates over to coaching basketball coaching sport you know there's a lot of um you know aggressive play and competitiveness in, in basketball and um you know, you've got to pick and choose when you want to be competitive and you've got to pick and choose when you want to be a little bit more docile. And I think, you know, spending the, the two years or so <laughs> working in the prisons uh, helped me uh, finesse that skill maybe a little bit better than what I had before going in. Was it maximum security? It was everything. It was, uh, it, it was the largest facility in Australia. And it was based in WA and it housed everything from uh, medium to uh, longer serving prisoners, um, and different wings. Um, I was in one of those, uh, less, like one of those wings that people prefer not to go into. Um, and you know, it, it does, it challenges you a little bit and, um, no two days were the same, you know, that was one thing I did appreciate that. You know, not something I wanted to do forever and kept you on your toes, that's for sure. Do you, last one on that. Do, do you have like a lasting kind of strongest memory from those, that, 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 that work? Yeah. Um, no matter, I guess one thing you walk away from is that I, no matter how tough you think you are or, you know, how bad you think your day is, there's someone that's going to be tougher than you or there's someone having a worse day and just being conscious of, again, how you communicate to everybody. Um, you know, there's multiple examples uh, that, you know, sort of put me in my place a little bit where you realize, oh, okay, like this is, this is, this is not talking anymore. And, you know, you learn pretty quick. So um, yeah, other than that, it's, it's definitely character building. I think I'm right in saying that there's three NBL teams that you've not beaten as a head coach. Tasmania, of course, yep. nobody has yet. Uh, and the other two are Perth and Sydney. Yeah. If you could only beat one of those two teams, Perth or Sydney, next season, maybe you, you get a couple of wins over that team. Which one of those would you choose? Um, yeah, I don't know. I've never actually thought of that. I guess it always it was always going to be a little bit sweeter beating Trev, uh, just him being my former boss. Um, he was the only that was the only series we lost last year. We had to head head on everybody last year. Mm -hmm. um, it was just points. I think was the difference with Illawarra, uh, but we tied two two with Illawarra. We beat everybody else, including Melbourne, um, but we were all in five against Perth and. <laughs> that was the one that stung the most. Um, you know, oh, look, it's always, it's, I, I, you know, like I haven't thought too much about it, but, um, you know, I'll, I'll take any win from anybody and uh, go from there, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about the way things ended up there 
in Sydney? Oh, yeah. Uh, look, you know, I, the main thing was um, we both understood uh, each other's point of view and we both understood that we wanted separate things. And I think that's what is been awesome here working with um, Mark and Troy is that we do have a philosophy and uh, an ideal, uh, you know, that uh, ideals that align, um, you know, and, you know, working with Mark, you know, as much as I have now, as extensively I have the last couple of weeks, but, you know, virtually touching base with him every day, we're aligned with the way we think about players and structure and, and, and even in regards to communication and, 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 and running the show. Um, and so it's just everything just seems like it's been a better fit. So, um, you know, I've always been appreciative of every opportunity I've had with Perth and, and Sydney. And, uh, and I've definitely learned uh, from my experience in Sydney what, what to do and what not to do. Um, I've, I know I've evolved in some areas in a sense of things that I made that I did wrong in Sydney. And then I'm not going to make those same mistakes here. Um, and on the flip side, there's some things I'm pretty adamant on that I know that are right and I'm going to stay with that and I get to do that here as well. Can, can I just dive into that a little bit further? What, what in, in a slightly more specific way, would you say are the ways in which you're a better coach now than you were 12 months ago? Yeah. Um, I guess it was... Um, I try like going into my first year, I guess, was knowing the success that we had with Will and wanting to try and replicate those things. Um, and in doing so by trying to be as close to that as possible with regards to, um, you know, um, just how everybody had their role established, I guess, um, you know, with the, the strength side of things. Um, with the assistant coaching staff side of things, with the, you know, the, the daily schedules. Um, um, here, in Sid, uh, here in Cairns, it is a case of um, I've got my hand in every pie. You know, I, I get to, and I said this with Mark, because I, I don't want to be a guy that wants to micromanage everything, but, you know, I want to start like that so at least I know exactly how everything's sort of operating and going about. Um, whereas I sort of left that to us. Uh, own devices because, uh, you know, it was just the way that was put in. And so if there was something that I didn't particularly like, my problem is, is I become very reactionary and I become very over the top emotional and explosive. Um, and so that was through my own um, misunderstanding of how that side of the business operates. Uh, whereas here, I have a better understanding of it because I'm part of the process now. Um, What's been really cool working with Mark and so uh, Dr. Josh Guy, who is a Viking with a PhD, the best way to describe him, um, he's head of our high performance team. And now we have two um, strength conditioning coaches, um, Steph, who comes from the Brisbane Bullets. Um, she's going to be taking care of the analytics and the catapult side of things. We've got Rogan coming up from Victoria, um, both um, with industry experience, both studying for their PhD in a position that's been created uh, through Mark and Josh, uh, that is uh, Cairns Taipans and CQ University. And so now we've got this strength team of three strong, where last year Cairns didn't have that. Um, and, you know, I look at that and go, I've seen how it started. I've been part of the, the building process of that and the foundations and who came in and we've put the structures in place to, okay, well, I've got a better understanding of how a lot of works now, but also they got a better understanding of how I want things to, to operate. Um, and I guess that really is um, the biggest difference is that my stress levels are a little bit more relaxed. And again, it's early in the season, right? We haven't played the game yet, mm. but um, knowing exactly how every department works and um, having a say in it is, um, has been great. Uh, you spoke earlier about, um, you know, how you, you've put some things on the board there about, uh, you know, the, some, some, some things you want to make sure permeate through the team and through the club this season. What, what are one or two of those things that you kind of want to hang, you want the team and the organisation to hang its hat on this season? Yeah, I mean, I mean, some of the simplest things have just been crisp passing. You know, like we've been talking about the importance of having a crisp pass. You know, you know my view is the chest pass is, 
is dead. You can't make that pass anymore on the half court. So, you know, we're working on outside hand passing and making it crisp and, and precise and, and go where exactly it needs to go. Um, so there's that there's that small aspect of it, right? And then there's a the bigger aspect of it is, um, you know, we find guys for anything and everything now and, and it's about accountability. And, you know, that was one of the things that talking to this main group was, you know, they want to be held accountable and they're comfortable with that. Okay. So we are. And, you know, if guys are, you know, leaving their reversible on the table for someone else to pick it up, well, that's a $25 fine now. And, you know, if you, you know, forget to turn your catapult on and we need that data from practice, well, that's the fine as well. And, and um, you know, just establishing that hard line that everyone's been super responsive of uh, is been pretty much the, um, you know, the, 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 the foundation building this first, you know, six week preseason that we've been fortunate to have. Last one, man. What, what, what would you say in your eyes success would look like for the Taipans this season? Um, you know, it's a success driven industry and uh, we want to win and we want to finish top four. If it's still going to be top four, I don't know if the NBA is going to change it now there's 10 teams, but um i've made that clear um everybody everybody here has different individual ambitions and that's okay you know guys want to get to the nba or guys want to make more money or they want to cement their legacy in the nbl um, they want to be part of that team that brings a championship to cans whatever their own individual ambition is you know we need to align it so we have a common theme within the team um we're not going to be some pedestrian franchise that's along for the ride um you know we want to win we want to win convincingly we want to be you know there's a level of arrogance we want to have um you know all these guys are real hungry for that and you know we're pretty fortunate that you know we've got seven returning guys so there's consistency in the roster um with this playing group that they know each other and we want to expand and build on that um so success is winning and if we don't win then is going to be new players and new coaching staff and new high performance team. And, you know, Cairns deserve the championship 22 years in the league and, you know, uh, they've come close. So, um, you know, that's the language that we're speaking. And, you know, we encourage everybody talking shit and sort of saying that we can't get it. Um, we love being, um, you know, uh, not taken seriously as a, as a contender and good, like, that's that's fine, you know. We we want to hear that and use that as fuel, and and um, and hopefully that we can start generating some wins and building some momentum and, and start changing the language that people view us as. Love it, love it. You guys are back in the convention center. New head coach, new attitude, new season. Looking forward to it. That'd be great. It'd be good. Awesome, man. <laughs> Thanks, Ace, for the chat. Appreciate it. Thank you. 